Good afternoon, everyone. It's a late Sunday afternoon. Had an awesome day at church, a lot of cool things going on. Had a young man get baptized today. And uh, just had a big rainstorm come through. I'm gonna spend about an hour and a half to two hours fishing and I'm on the Logan River instead of the Blacksmith Fork. This is the first time I've been on the Logan this year, I think, I may have fished it once. And uh, so we'll see if we can get into something. Little cutty guys. Not very big. Got off nice, <clears throat> got off nice and easy. First fish of the day. I had one more on, but he got off. That's the first one we got all the way in. That was a little cutthroat. About seven inches long, not very big. And this time, guys, a brown. Nice brown. Oh, I looped him. Look at that. Oh, that's a pretty brown there, baby. Oh, yeah. Almost got you, bud. Hold on. All right, guys, there's a nice, healthy brown. There it goes. He got off. No, he didn't. Still on. He started swimming with the current and I couldn't feel him anymore. Another pretty, pretty cutthroat. Look how orange his fins are. Boy, he's orange, orange. Look at that. What a pretty fish. Not a big one, but a pretty one. Another pretty cut. Oh man, this guy got hooked in the gills, guys. He's bleeding like a pig. We'll keep him and eat him because he's not going to make it if I put him back. So we will do a little... Uh, We'll do a little trout and pesto. I said I was going to do that on one of my other videos and I ended up not showing you guys that. In fact, I ended up not cooking them with pesto. I did a little um, Asian zing with them. So we'll, we'll do the pesto with this guy. And I thought that would get us a fish, guys. 
And that looked like a good spot. Oh, there we go. Ah! Bugger, he got off on the jump. That looked like a brown versus a cutthroat. I wasn't gonna record anymore, it says my SD card's full. And my spare one is in my pack. Not this little fanny pack that I fish with, but my hiking pack. I forgot to switch it out, so. Anyway, I'm gonna put this guy on the stringer and... Hopefully this records. Right now it's not giving me the SD card message, so maybe this will show, we'll see. We'll get them on the stringer, and then we'll see if we can catch one more to cook up. <laughs> I don't know if that caught that on film. Did you guys see that fish just jump that submerged log to try and catch that lure before it went over the edge? That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Ah, he missed it. Isn't that cool, guys? Look at all the mist on the cliffs. I'm heading out now. We'll go home and get these prepared. And see how they taste in the pesto. All right, here's what we're working with, guys. I got these trout cleaned. We've got them on a piece of foil. We're going to be putting on a little bit of butter, some lemon, and the pesto sauce. I'm going to squirt lemon on it. And then I'm also going to put a little quarter, about an eighth of a lemon, in the body cavity. I like it that way. Get a little butter in here. I'm not a big butter fan. I don't like it as much as a lot of people. In fact, I don't add butter to anything other than when I'm cooking. I do want a little bit on there. Got a little bit on the skin on the outside too. Take this pesto and put it both inside and on the outside. Oh, I haven't opened this yet, so it's still got the seal. So we'll start with the inside first. Just gonna line that body cavity with it. And put a little bit on the outside as well. And we'll do the same for the second one. Sorry, I think I got my arm in the way of the camera. Let's come around over here. My wife will probably shoot me if I stick that spoon back in that jar of pesto after rubbing it in that fish. So we better get a fresh spoon here for the outside layer. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to take and squeeze our lemon over it. That smells good, everybody. I'm going to take these little quarter pieces and shove these in the body cavity. And 
and we're going to wrap that in the foil and put them on the grill. So after I get them on the grill and they're about halfway, I'll show you guys again. A little dark out here, guys. Hope you can see it. So we got the grill heated up. You got the trout laying down. They were pretty small. And they're not very big, so I imagine five or six minutes on each side will be good. We're going to start the vegetables, and we'll pull these off when they're done. So in here, guys, I've got some zucchini and some squash out of our garden. It's got a little bit of butter in it, a little bit of onion powder, and then some uh, garlic citrus seasoning. So that's what we're going to do with that while we wait for those fish to warm up. All right, guys, as you can see, I'm not trying to dazzle you with my plating skills. Only someone lazy like me does a cook video on a paper plate. <laughs> but first, we'll take the veggies. Those are awesome. That citrus garlic seasoning is perfect with them. Cook just right, a little bit of butter. money. All right, now we're going to go with the fish. I can see a couple little tiny bones here sticking out. It's got a little bit of that pesto sauce on it right there. Let's see how it is. It's pretty good, guys. I'm not a huge pesto fan. My wife likes pesto more than me, so I'm going to have her try it in just a second. <laughs> She's grinning because you're in the reflection of the window. It's okay. Hey Rhonda, behind me. <laughs> so let's see, uh, let's see if she likes it. Well, that one was really good. That one was even better, guys. Thanks so much for watching this fishing video today, guys. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not a big pesto fan, but that actually turned out pretty good. I enjoyed it. Sorry for the filming on this. I don't do a very good job filming these catch, clean, and cook ones. I'm just trying to do too many things and probably should use a different camera than the GoPro on some of those shots, which I've done in the past. I'll try to do a better job filming in the future. Uh, but I just want to wrap up the video with a couple quick things. Number one, uh, a mail call. I got a couple stickers in the mail for some channels that I really, really like. Uh, very gracious them to send these to me, so I want to show them to you. I got uh, stickers from two different channels. The first one is from Nicole Hikes A Lot. Hopefully that's focusing in. She's got a beautiful sticker. Uh, if you've never watched Nicole's channel, you need to subscribe to it. Uh, she takes some amazing backpacking trips. I mean, she's been all over the country from the Smokies to the Rockies to the Cascades. She's done some Utah trips, which obviously I always enjoy, kind of my backyard. Uh, but again, that's Nicole Hikes A Lot. I'll put a link to her channel in the description. Check it out when you get a chance. Thank you so much, Nicole, for the sticker, and thanks for all your support. Uh, the other channel is Drones for God's Glory. Now, Drones... <laughs> sent me the biggest sticker I've ever seen. Uh, and he and I were joking about it on email. I mentioned that I'm gonna put all these stickers on my rifle case. I thought that'd be kind of a cool way to have all you guys just be with me when I'm up on the mountain for some hunts. Uh, but I don't believe I'll put this one on my rifle case. I think it's a little too big. So I'm not sure where I'm gonna put this one yet, Drones. But I will definitely put it somewhere. If you guys have not checked out Drones for God's Glory, boy you need to see that channel if you need some encouragement if you're having a rough day and you just need to be reminded about God's goodness and his faithfulness it's a great channel to check out he's an excellent drone pilot and he takes amazing footage in Colorado and he sets that to music and he'll put some scripture verses in it but I always get encouraged with his videos so so thank you Steve for the sticker and and God bless you man keep up the great work that you're doing so I'll put links in uh, the description to both of those channels. Last thing I want to do is the Minute on the Mountain. The Minute on the Mountain today comes from Proverbs 28, and it's verse 13, and I'm just going to read it for you guys. It says, Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. 
Now, the Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're all broken. Uh, we do it all the time. There's absolutely no benefit in pretending that we don't. So it's important to be willing to be transparent and confess our sins, to say, man, I messed up. God, please forgive me. Uh, because it says that we find mercy when we do that. We find forgiveness. Uh, and not just to the Lord, but also to the people that we've harmed. You know, if you've, if you've harmed someone, it's important for us to ask forgiveness, to confess that sin, to get it out in the open. Because we all know when we don't, it just eats at us. It just gnaws on us. You know, we've got shame, we've got guilt, and God doesn't want you living under that burden of shame and guilt. He wants to be able to confess that, get it off your chest, and know that when you do that, He forgives you. In fact, the Bible says that He removes our sins as far as the east is from the west. So again, that's Proverbs 28, 13. I'll read it one more time to you. It says, Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. That's the Minute on the Mountain for today's video. Thanks so much for coming along on this fishing trip today. It was fun to catch multiple species in a, in a different river that I've been fishing most of the year. I hope you guys enjoyed it. God bless you. See you next time right on the mountain.